Hi, today we're going to take a look at setting up your online booking. So up in the top right cog, we're going to go to online booking and we're going to switch straight to online booking setup. First things first, you can see whether your online booking is enabled currently or not with this tick. Then we can click the booking link and we can see what it's currently looking like here. So at the moment we have the option for a new customer to create an account. We have the option for a customer to sign in and we have the option for a guest to check out enabled. We've got our logo updated and we've chosen our color. So over in the settings, we can then go and find where all of these are to update them to how you would like them to look. Um, the first thing we've got here is the booking up sale. So this is an additional page that you can add into your online booking. You can select the services that you would like to be shown to your customers and you can add the tagline promoting what it is that you'd like them to add on. The next is in our availability page within the online booking, you can show whether it's green and red. Um, so the red days are when you are unavailable and the green days show when you are available. This stops it all looking black to customers to make it easy for them to book. You can allow multiple bookings. So this is good if you are someone that wants only one user within Savvy, but you want to allow multiple bookings within that user. So if we were to allow this, so set it at three within one user, you would be able to have three bookings at 9 a.m. on one day for one user. So most people have that turned off. Um, slot increments in minutes is exactly how it shirt says. Um, you can choose whether you want to show the available times in 30 minutes or 15 minute slots. That one is more for your business hours and working hours calendar. So that will work out what's what times the slot chosen by the customer will fit into and offer them all of those times in either 30 minutes or 15 minutes. The slot management will always show them the predefined times that you've set up within there. The service matrix is really good if you've got members of staff that perform different things. So if you've got a bather, you can select deselect them for all of the grooming services and allow them to do all of the de-shedding and the simple baths. Um, manual day availability. This is in our calendar where in week view we can click the day of the week and mark it as full. And that, that turns the day red. Um, then that's not available in online booking while that feature is turned on. So back into online booking, that's down just on this check, check here. You can limit the number of days in advance to take bookings. So this, if you don't want bookings this time of year to come in for Christmas, you could set it to maybe 30 days or 90 days, 30 days for about a month, 90 days for about three months. Um, so you'll only be able to take bookings up to that day. Um, the booking slots I've already slightly touched on. So the business hours, working hours as holidays and calendar availability. Now look at all of your users um, columns to see whether they are available or not. Slot management is a lot more restricted in that you will create the slot, the start time and end time that you would like per day per user. Under each user, currently they cannot overlap. So that's where if every groomer has a start time of nine o'clock and then every groomer say has a start time then for the next groom at 11 or 11.30 or you stagger it between each of your users. That's when then possibly the allow multiple bookings could come in handy in that each of your slots could then be filled two times, three times. The next options is the allowable booking options, which I've already touched on when we had a look at the booking view from the customer's point of view. So that we can choose whether to allow guest booking, choose whether to allow customers to log in, or choose whether to allow customers to sign up. One of these will always have to be checked. So if you only want pre-existing customers, it may be that you deselect guest and customer sign up and only allow customers to log in. I'm going to leave all three on just for while we're going through all of the setup. 
The next option is whether or not you will require approval. So this is where customers will request an appointment first. It will come back through to you in Savvy. You will then have to manually go check if where they have requested to book suits you, your staff in on that day, and the space and the dog that's been requested. And you have the option to reschedule or to cancel and reject their booking. With that turned off, all appointments requested will go straight live into your calendar. You will still get a notification, but you won't have to manually go in and approve any of the bookings. Staff selection is our next one. So that will allow them to see which user they are booking with through the online booking. So if you don't want staff members' names shown, we'd leave that turned off. The next option is all only if you are a multi-location um, savvy. Um, so you can allow branch location. You can exclude certain locations if you've got a lot of locations set up within your savvy. And you can also strongly suggest that you mark branch selection is mandatory um, if you are a multi-location salon. Um, and you allow them to pick the salons, make sure that they do pick a salon, otherwise it could go into any salon where there's availability. Oops, service selection. So this is just how to make it look a little bit prettier to customers. So you can show a service filter. So this is just a, a search box at the top where they can start typing. Certainly if you've got a long list of services available, that can make it a little bit quicker for customers to find the right service for them. Show the service description. I'd also suggest to have this on and underneath the um, services, you can within each service create a description and this is where it will all pull through then to the online booking. You can also collapse service groups. So when they click on a service group and then click onto the next, the one above will then close to make it easier for customers to navigate. You can also then exclude services. So if there's certain services that you don't want available in the online booking, or you've got them set for your um, added, added extras as part of your booking up sale, you can hide the services from the main booking field so that they only are visible then in that additional extra option in the second screen. The next bits is a little bit more of what we can change nice and quickly within the booking config. So booking notification, who needs to know every time a booking is made? You will automatically get a notification up in the top right and they will all appear in the left under the booking requests. But you can also set in here for each of your users to get a SMS or a email. Payment details, you can set up how you would like any payments to be made, whether you want a deposit, full payment or no payment. And you've got the option for Stripe, PayPal or Savvy Pay. And you can link these up, up in the top right, under the cog still and within payments. And you can link and set all three of those up. Back down to the next section look and feel this is where you can upload your image you can change your background color and you can change your button color then down to the booking form this is where you can add in some mandatory questions or are you a new customer and then don't make that mandatory so not everyone will have to check it um, so you can click the plus and add a text a large text box or a checkbox are the three that I recommend for online booking. Um, customers tend to get a little bit more confused if you're using the date, date, time, time, or a signature box within the online booking. The next option is if you have um, booking request enabled, this is where you can start setting up those automated messages that are gonna go out to your customer to let them know that the booking request has been received. And you've got the option to send that as an email or an SMS. If the SMS is blank, only the email will attempt to send. And very similarly, you've got the confirmation message, rejection message, and the reschedule message. Under the emails, I strongly suggest popping in your salon name always within the subject line. And you can always add in all of your links to social media as well within here. We've got a cool little butterfly-like button here, which you can click once you've 
typed in, say, Facebook, you can highlight it, click the link, and then you can pop your URL, your full website address there to take you to Facebook and hit save and that will become a live link. Every time that you make a change within the online booking, please do remember to come back down to the bottom and hit update. And then we can always either in the tab that we've got open, refresh it. Or we can click each time the booking link and that will open your booking page how you've updated it. So if we have a look through the online booking now, we can go as a guest, we can just pop in a pet name, pop a breed in, add a pet, and then we can see all of your groups as they appear. And under the groups, you can drag and drop. So these all appear in the correct order for, for you. So that is up in the top right cog again, under services, service groups, and you can drag and drop these so they show in the correct order for you. So if we have a look in full grooms, we're going to select a groom. You can see the description is all showing in here. Then we're going to go to the next screen. This is where you can add on any extras. Click again to the next screen. And this is where we can see then all the green days or any red days. They can select the time that they would like as a customer. Click next and then we get to the booking form. So mandatory always will be first name, last name, email address and telephone number. And then underneath are the additional information ones that you've popped in that you are asking the customer to fill in. So quite often we see, are you a new customer? So you can see if you allow guest checkout or new customers to sign up, who is a new customer if you don't recognize their name. You can pop in that you, you, their customer understands all prices are from and maybe they'll call the salon if they need a, a more accurate quote. And also they understand all durations are an estimate and they'll be told at drop off or you'll call them at the correct time to pick their dog up. You also have the option to pop in a option for any customers to add in a discount code. This isn't automatically taken off of the um, transaction at the moment, but when it comes through to the booking request, you can take a look and then at that point you can add it to the created appointment. As soon as I've added in all fields that are required, so that we've got the little asterisks and the top three, four fields, then you can go ahead and book the appointment or if they is a deposit request or a payment requested at this point that will all become live as soon as everything above has filled in to enable them to book. That's a quick view all around the online booking. Any questions though do pop it to us through the help chat or email us hello at itsallsavvy.com and we can help you with any questions on how to further set up your online booking.